Thanks for joining us right here at 5 o'clock. Right now we're following a developing story out of Niagara Falls. Two people were found dead in a vehicle that exploded at a checkpoint on the American side of a U.S.-Canada bridge. The Rainbow Bridge was closed after that explosion. You're seeing video right here. We are told, again, two people are dead in this. The Niagara Falls mayor's office says the incident involved a vehicle crossing into the United States from Canada. And because it is an international border crossing, U.S. Customs and Border Protection will be involved in this investigation, the FBI also assisting. Right now, four border crossings are currently closed. That's the Rainbow Bridge, the Peace Bridge, Whirlpool Bridge, and Lewiston Bridge. ABC World News tonight will have much more on this Rainbow Bridge car explosion. You can see that coverage coming up tonight at 6.30, right after WHAS 11 News at 6. And we're following more breaking news, this one local news. The judge in the Brooks Houck case out of Nelson County in Bardstown says he will not recuse himself. Houck has asked the court in Nelson County to dismiss Judge Charles Sims. They also sent it up to the Kentucky Supreme Court, which declined to get involved. Houck is accused of killing his girlfriend, Crystal Rogers. We'll keep an eye on these developments. We'll have more for you coming up tonight at 6. And the countdown's on. Thanksgiving now just hours away. Do you have everything you need? The last minute rush for groceries is one of our top stories right here at 5 o'clock. Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie are at Value Market in the Highlands. Taylor, are you seeing any crowds over there? Well, we did see a bit of a crowd, but first I want to show you what we have in our shopping cart here. I have a little bit of pumpkin pie and some desserts that you will want at Thanksgiving dinner. But just to show you what the lines are looking at at the moment, uh, just a steady crowd right here. We've seen a couple people come in from work just buying those last minute ingredients like butter and sugar. And you can see just what the store is like at this moment. But shoppers we talk to tell us they've had no problems finding those last minute ingredients. We've seen everything from carts filled with paper products, desserts, and beverages. And um, to make that, spec that Thanksgiving dinner spectacular, some shoppers even stopped by the deli to pick up some side dishes. Experts say Thanksgiving dinner is more cost-friendly than last year, which has helped several families when budgeting. We talked to Kakisha, who isn't cooking anything major this year, but she is responsible for cuttery products and is happy to enjoy family is one of the big times that our family all gets together. We have different things sporadically throughout the year, but this is a big one. Family feast, everybody talks about what they want for Christmas and what they're going to do for Christmas and play some games and yeah, have fun. And Kakisha and other shoppers we talk to say they're just happy to spend this time with loved ones fellowshipping over good food. And make sure you continue to watch WHAS 11 because we will show you some of the most common items that we have found in shopping carts at Value Market. Shay? Thank you so much, Taylor, for that update. Well, the AAA is expecting this to be the third largest holiday travel season in history, with 54 million Americans expected to travel. Here at home, Louisville International Airport leaders told us they, too, are expecting record crowds. 49 million people hitting the roads, 5 million expected to fly across the country. Experts all over the nation are preparing for that mass number of travelers. WHAS 11's Jim Stratman was inside Louisville Muhammad Ali this morning. Airport officials say they expect more than 100,000 people to come through SDF before Sunday, which could be a record number for them. So despite what we've seen this morning, very short TSA lines, they are telling people to be prepared. Wednesday as well as Saturday and Sunday are going to be our busiest days here locally in Louisville, but so far things are looking good. Which typically means you could run into some long wait lines. But travelers that we spoke with this morning consider themselves pretty lucky. Where are y'all traveling to this holiday? Uh, we're flying into O'Hare. O'Hare. And then Chicago. Chicago. You guys shocked at all to see how small that line is, how quick it's moving? <laughs> yes, that is, it's very <laughs> surprising. Especially compared to O'Hare Airport. We, I've waited in line there like two hours yeah. just to get the security. On this is shorter than I've seen this year. Yeah. Monica Small is on her way home to Albuquerque. She recently moved to Louisville and is looking forward to a big family Thanksgiving for the first time in years. It's exciting. We do this almost every year except COVID. It's been pushed back several years. So this is the first time since COVID that we're all getting back together in a big capacity for Thanksgiving. We are expecting more than 102,000 folks. 
uh, likely to come through the airport as both arriving and departing passengers. That's likely going to set a new record for us here for Thanksgiving travel. Not surprising to us. Natalie Shadon with the Muhammad Ali International Airport says that SDF was the fastest growing airport in the last two quarters. She says the airport has added two new TSA checkpoints. It's finished its baggage claim renovations and it's ready for this surge of travelers. SDF officials say part of that preparedness is going to be making sure you know where to park. They say a lot of people are going to be coming through here, which means that parking could be very limited through the weekend. Reporting in Louisville, Jim Stratman, WHAS 11 on your side. If you're driving for the holidays, AAA predicts more than 49 million Americans are right there with you. It says the best time to travel is early. The worst time is actually right now, 2 to 6 today. On Thursday, you want to try to hit the road before 10 or after 5. We're told you'll have the most trouble between 11 and 3. And if you're hitting the road on Black Friday, aim for before 11 or after 7. AAA predicts the worst road conditions on Friday will be between noon and 4. And when we give you a live look outside here, you're going to think no trouble on the roads with this kind of weather. Of course, that's the way we hope it stays, Christina. And you would be absolutely correct to think that. It's just plain old quiet. We cleared out really nicely through the course of this afternoon, just shaping up to be a wonderful end to our busy travel Wednesday out there. As we take a look at the radar, you can see that it's not just here that we're quiet, really all across the Ohio Valley. We do just have some very light rain showers passing through West Virginia, but that'll continue to scoot on off to the east into, of course, the rest of the evening. The larger view showing you that really most of the United States is quiet at this time. However, far up to our northeast, all of that snow that's been impacting Maine is just now pushing out of Maine's hair there. So uh, as we take a look out to the west, not a whole lot going on there, at least not until you see some very light snow showers impacting Montana, and that'll continue to work its way toward Colorado over the next 24 hours. So we can be thankful for what we're seeing outside right now as temperatures are just shy of 50 degrees. Certainly on the cool side as when you impact that or when you also add in that breeze coming in from the west northwest at 15, making it feel a little bit cooler than it actually is outside. 43 is how it feels here in the city and then also some uh, feeling like the mid 40s around Bowman Field. So across the board here, we're dealing with a mixed bag of temperatures. We have some mid 40s farther to the south, lower 40s in southern Indiana, where uh, Paoli, Indiana, looking like the cool spot across all of Kentuckiana. Going into the overnight hours, it is going to be quite chilly, waking up to temperatures in the mid 30s here in Louisville, but falling to freezing elsewhere. Now, don't let that uh, set you back, though, because we have a really nice Thanksgiving forecast. And I'll take you hour by hour coming up in less than 10 minutes. Shay. All right, Christina, thank you so much. New tonight, the appellate court upheld the firing of former LMPD detective Joshua Janes. Janes is accused of falsifying the search warrant that led to the raid on Breonna Taylor's apartment. He was fired in January of 2021 by former interim chief of police Yvette Gentry, but he fought the decision, suing the department. The Jefferson Circuit Court upheld the decision, and now the appellate court has done the same. Jane still is facing federal charges, accused of violating Brianna Taylor's civil rights that night. We reached out to his attorney for a statement on the news. He told us they're disappointed, but not surprised. Today, LMPD Police Chief Jackie Gwen Villarreal is being called into question because of what she said on the stand during a civil trial earlier this week. The case stems from a 2021 police chase resulting in a fatal crash. The estate of Trevin Mitchell, the man who died in the crash, is suing LMPD officer Ben Sullivan, arguing the officer's negligence led to the crash. While on the stand, the chief testified under oath she was not wearing a body camera on scene. She said that if she had the device, she would have turned it on per LMPD protocol. However, the attorney for the victim in this case showed photographic proof that the chief was in fact wearing a body camera, actually pulling up a picture from the scene showing the camera. If you would have had it on you, you obviously would have turned it on, right? Because you were out there, you were interacting with the public, right? I would have activated it if I had it on. That's your story, you're sticking to it. That's my statement. I want to show the jury some truth and transparency. <clears throat> Where's the footage, G? You delete it? 
That was the moment there where they pulled up the picture right there on the screen. We did reach out to the mayor's office for a comment and we'll be getting that for you just as soon as we receive it. Another topic brought out during Chief Villarreal's testimony was the current status of the consent decree. The agreement between Metro government and the federal government ordered by the Department of Justice to implement change within the police department. It comes after the DOJ released a scathing report back in March. We have been waiting for the two parties to come together, negotiate and decide on a final agreement. But according to the chief's testimony, it's something that hasn't even started. We have not received a draft consent um, decree to see exactly um, where their position is. Um, we have not begun any negotiations. So with all accuracy and honesty, I cannot speak to this report in its fullness because we're still in the beginning, we're still at this process. The city of Louisville is expected to pay upwards of $7 million to fund the consent decree, a number similar to New Orleans, which has been under the agreement for 15 years. The trial of a man accused of killing two people inside a rooster's restaurant ended in a mistrial just hours after it began. Carson Wrights is charged with two counts of murder and four counts of wanton endangerment for a shooting from December 23rd, 2021. Opening statements in the trial started around 1.30 on Tuesday, and we learned around 4.45 the judge declared a mistrial. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office says the court cited what's called a manifest necessity to declare the mistrial in response to the defense's opening statement. Manifest necessity is when something so disruptive happens in court, conducting a fair trial is impossible. The mistrial does not mean that the suspect tears off the hook. The prosecution can still bring him back on the charges. Today, more on the disturbing details into the old shooting at Old National Bank. A 64-page report released by LMPD paints a picture of how and why Connor Sturgeon planned and executed the April 10th mass shooting all within one week. The evidence file includes writings from Sturgeon describing how easy it was for him to buy an AR-15, four magazines, and 120 rounds of ammunition, all for $700. He bought the weapon at River City Firearms on Preston Highway. He says he lied on the paperwork at the gun shop, saying he had not been institutionalized and did not intend to use the guns for violence, both which he says were false. In the writing, Sturgeon called himself a psycho, telling his parents to fight lawmakers on lax gun laws and ask them to stop the sale of weapons of mass destruction. Sturgeon's family took him to emergency therapy just days before the shooting. Investigative files reveal he was on various mental health medications and had voluntarily checked into a mental hospital years earlier. The file also includes medical reports and addresses concerns from Sturgeon's parents about CTE. The diagnosis is the result of multiple repeated head injuries. Connor Sturgeon's family said he had three, quote, concussions of significance while playing sports in middle and in high school. Well, after the shooting, they requested the state medical examiner examine his brain to see if CTE was a factor in his actions. After an exam from the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, the investigative file says, quote, consultation with the medical experts involved in the examination of the brain determined CTE was not present. If you'd like to see that full report for yourself, we have posted it to our website. You can find it at whas11.com. Zach Wilt, the brother of LMPD officer Nicholas Wilt, has been named the Oldham County Emergency Management Director. Nicholas Wilt was shot in the head while responding to the April 10th shooting at Old National Bank. This video shows Zach pushing Nick out of the hospital when he was released back in July. Nick had been in the hospital recovering for three months. Zach Wilt was officially named the director on November the 8th.